that, that would have been the idea. So you can actually have local devices in here. Again, that was the architecture. We have the exact same, so everything that's blue stays the same on any channel. The controller logic stays the same, the presentation models. There's actually very few presentation models. Um, for all the information that there is, you know, for one, for the LEDs, it's, it's one attribute, on or off. So there's very little information that needs to be dis, um, synchronized between client and server. Now, we can have many different technologies and use cases that uh, run against the same server and using the exact same logic. You can have a desktop client running Swing, JavaFX, SWG, Eclipse RCP, NetBeans RCP, Apache Pivot, Lanterna, what have you, or um, mobile web, JavaScript, or whatever, web or mobile web, yeah, JavaScript mainly in HTML. Um, and everything that's in there, I mean, that's a huge space. Or something like a small device that's able to run Java like the Raspberry Pi. Or something as small as the Tesla microcontroller, which has almost nothing. It is very specialized once you put one of these um, attachments on it, but can at least run JavaScript. All these are natively supported by OpenDolphin. But there can be devices that OpenDolphin cannot possibly know anything about. Call them alien devices, alien mini devices. There we don't have the, the exact same um, presentation model abstraction. It's usually also like OpenHub is, is using this. But they can, for, with one, one way or the other, they must be able to contact the server. I mean, that's Internet of Things. You have some protocol that you can send to the server. And then the server is responsible for putting that information on the event bus. Your server-side adapter is responsible for that. And then you can play with them. Right? Actually, it's kind of the... On, I, I should have put OpenHub in there. OpenHub could, could be the integration layer on that side. Now, um, IoT and the cloud, right? That's <laughs> something that kind of goes together. Uh, we wouldn't want, to, the typical use case is that we wouldn't want to have specialized servers, unless like in home automation may have a specialized server in your home, but we are talking more about industrial settings really in this regard. And this, you have typically a cloud, it could be a private cloud, but you have some, some anonymous server that you connect to. You have all your visualizations decoupled, Actually, that's a pretty good architecture also for, lots of people say microservices these days, but I, or React, the React pattern is also like this. You have sm lots of small components that, as we have seen, work together. They know about each other, but kind of remotely. And they're totally decoupled on the client side. They don't even know whether the other side is hardware or software. Not even that, right? They don't know. And uh, so you can very, oh, we had in this morning we had this example, um, you may want to consume weather data from a device, uh, from your weather station locally, or from Yahoo Weather, right? So the, we don't care. Sensors are decoupled, actuators are decoupled. And actually, we in, when we program graphical user interfaces, we use it for decoupling of visualizations, such that we don't need to be aware whether some other part of the system is um, 3270, right? Like old, old host masks, or whether it's already something new. We don't care. It's, it's a very good strategy for migrating to new architectures, to new technologies. Yep, so it is. Open Dolphin is an architecture, and it cares for the communication, for synchronization between client and server. It's totally asynchronous, and it's also an implementation, so there's implementations for Java and for JavaScript, and we also like our open source implementations, and are proud of that, and think that's highly efficient. But it is not so much about the implementation, it is about the architecture. Okay. One could think of many, many more uh, implementations. And the programming model is extremely simple, and simple is good, and simple scales because 
from as an application programmer, it is it is so easy as an application programmer. You know, you, there is a presentation model. I can read a value. I can I can write a value. I can listen for value changes. That's all there is. Well, there's nothing else to do. It's not that I I cannot even do more. I mean, this, this that's it. This is my building blocks, and everything else may be on top of that. Yeah, and then if you want to convince your management, here is the, it's all cost less and you're faster and so on. Yeah, good. Actually, it's, it's awesome for testing. You can test your application logic against these presentation models. You know, you, you, your test case is the view, and it is feeding presentation model setting values, reading values, listening for value changes, and exercises your server-side application. Actually, it runs in the same VM in that, in that regard. And the um, makes it awful, it makes it extremely easy to test your server-side logic. And, and what's untested in that regard is your client-side binding. You know, but this has to be tested manually anyway, I would say. So there's an upcoming JSR. If you're interested in that, um, please follow the Open Dolphin Twitter handle. Yeah, I'm not quite sure whether there's any kind of feedback. <laughs> Otherwise, if you liked it, um, despite the Wi-Fi being a bit shaky, I can give it another try, actually. Um, then please, please tweet about it. If you have suggestions for improvement, come to me. Um, if you didn't like it, you know this feedback thing is overrated. Yeah. Yep, uh, at Canoe, we do lots of interesting stuff. We give away software for free. We give away knowledge for free, like today. Um, but you can also, well, there's a commercial offering and you can buy this stuff and so on. That's it. Should I give this another try, or do you believe me? Can you imagine a blue LED blinking? Is it? Okay, I, I, I take this as a yes. Yeah. Okay. So any questions? Yes, please. Yes. Are the question was, are there any applications where I use iPhone? I use the iPad here. The, the yes, that, that is... This is what we call the uh, the, mo the mobile web or the uh, the, web, the web mile actually. Um, <coughs> native iOS in client is uh, we don't have that at the moment. We plan for and, and I would really like to do this, especially in Swift. It, I guess it would be three and a half days for implementing it, <laughs> and then three weeks for testing it. Um, anyway, it, it shouldn't be too much, right? I'm just not getting around yet. But if there's interest, um, uh, there's certainly um, there's certainly potential of doing this. And, and actually, I I very much like to do this. But uh, contributions are also welcome. You know, it's, it's open source. We are very open to contributions. Um, we already have quite some. And um, and it's all very very open and easy with this and a JSON being back, sent back and forth, and it's all, it's only a few commands that you have to implement. So that is actually pretty easy. Would be cool to have it, I'd like to have that. Some more? Usual question is what kind of transport you have, what kind of, what kind of um, protocol is it? Well, actually the protocol is pluggable, you can have your own protocol if you want, but standard is HTTP, right? make an HTTP request. Um, oh, what, what is licensing? Thank you, Apache 2 license. Apache 2, it's sometimes called the Apache slavery license because you get no rights and have to do all the work. Um, so you can do every, pretty much everything except uh, distributing something totally different under the same name. I guess that's the restriction. But otherwise, uh, it's all open source. So then, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the conference. I have to pick my. Oh, thank you. That's <laughs>